Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brandon Carter. I'm an application engineer with Ally PLM Solutions. I want to welcome you all to the Ally PLM NX Lunch Bite series. Um, I believe there's a few new people on here. If you're not familiar with the uh, what Lunch Bites is, it's a series briefly to explore capabilities within NX that are often overlooked. Um, please check our website for upcoming Lunch Bites topics and dates. We want our Lunch Bites to be valuable to you. So please let us hear your suggestions on topics we should cover. And if you could send those to us via email, that would be good. There's also a place on our website, allyplm.com, that you can suggest a lunch bite topic. Also keep in mind that our um, every replay of our lunch bites is on our website. So if you think it might be an existing topic, go ahead and check out our website um, as your suggestion topics. If you have any questions regarding today's session, please just write them down and send them in an email. Um, there's several of you, several of you on the line today. We're gonna have a pretty big uh, session today, so you're gonna be in listen-only mode. So if you just note your questions, email them to me. Um, that would be great. Today's session we're gonna talk about is on managing large assemblies. So here's a rough agenda. A few months ago, I can't remember exactly what date, we did a Lunch Bites on designing in the context assembly or top-down design. To kind of continue on with an assembly discussion, we want to work with large assembly modeling in NX and basically how do we simplify and manage large assemblies. How do we simplify, reduce what's loaded, reduce the number of components loaded, reduce the display. Right, the less we have loaded to memory, the better performance we're going to have inside of our NX assemblies. Also at the end, um, I've already actually touched on the topic back whenever I did a what's new in 8.5 lunch bites, um, the new large assemblies tools and drawings. We'll mention that at the end. Before we get started, this is one of my favorite questions to ask customers when I meet with them or if they come to training is what is a large assembly? What's a large assembly to you? You know, it could be 50 parts, it could be 500 parts, it could be 50,000 parts, it could be even more. So why do we need these large assembly tools? The more components, the more faces, the more geometry, you know, the more geometry overall that we have, the more computer resources that it takes to run it, the slower the performance will be, especially depending on the type of computer we have. So we want to make assembly is lightweight, we want to simplify geometry to, to get better results. The demonstration set I'm going to be using today, especially here in the first part, is um, this JCB tractor. I turned on the count and it has 3,359 parts. There are some of these parts that have multi-bodies, so there's probably actually more of a part count than even that. Um, so it, it's actually kind of funny that using this JCB tractor um, they're very neat machines if you've ever seen one um, in action or go to the website to look at them. They are very fast tractors. I used to work on a dairy farm um, throughout college in the summers and we contracted a guy to haul manure. Yes, we contracted somebody to haul manure <laughs> and he had a fleet of these machines and they were pretty neat to watch them in action. So that's what we'll be using. The first section we want to look at is reducing the complexity of components. So we're going to look at simplifying geometry. Today's presentation is going to be a combination of PowerPoint and demonstration inside NX. And if you guys have been on my Lunch Bites before, this will probably be actually a little more PowerPoint um, than normal. We have a lot of tools to get through today. I'll probably run over 30 minutes. We try to shoot for 30 minutes. If you've listened to me talk, I, I never hit that mark. I always run long, so I apologize in advance. If you do have to step off at 1 o'clock, remember we'll have the replay up on our website just as soon as possible. So underneath uh, reducing the complexity, we're going to look at simplifying geometry, the bodies. We're going to simplify assembly. We're going to wrap an assembly, and we're going to do a, a command called linked exterior. First of all, simplify body, I think of this as simplify a component, right? It's just like it sounds. Maybe we have a design version on the bottom left, you see this plate with two hole patterns, and I need a simplified version where I only need the one outside hole pattern. Hole pattern. So we can extract the body, create a simplified version, and store it in a separate reference set so that at the assembly level we can swap between a simplified reference set and a design reference set. 
to create these simplified bodies, we want to take advantage of synchronous modeling tools. If you have not used synchronous modeling tools and you need more information on that, I have done a lunch bites on that before, I believe, as a part one and part two. That'll be on our website if you want to check that out. So really what we're doing is reducing the amount of data that when the part is loaded, that it's actually loading that data into the assembly. We'll also take a look at this from the tractor. This is off the, the front of the rear end. This little housing you could saw, call it. And I want to show you how we can actually create a shape and just have a separate body that would be that simplified representation. The other tool we're going to look at, or another tool we're going to look at, is simplify assembly. So this could be for sub-assemblies. We could do this with multiple bodies in a component in a, in a component file. This has a wizard that steps you step by step through a process of simplifying the geometry. And the goal of this tool is to create a single airtight solid that represents the exterior of the assembly or sub-assembly maybe in this case. Options inside of that, we can extrude over top to create the representation. We can automatically plug holes, which is pretty cool. We can unite it all, all the single bodies, into one single solid for the representation. Like I said, that's our goal. At the end, you can also run a leak check to validate that it's one body and it removes those internal faces. Down here you see I have a simple example and I had these holes in here, also the holes where this pin went in and I said go ahead and plug all those holes underneath a certain diameter and unite them together and you see that this is one solid body. So we'll take a look at that inside the tractor a little bit later. Uh, here's a couple screenshots. I am going to run through this and we'll look at some of the, the highlights. Because of the 30 minute presentation, we don't have time to look at every single option. I want you to be aware of these tools, where to look for them, and the, you know, high level what they do so you can explore them further on your own. Um, down at the bottom, I'm showing you this plug circular holes, which I think is a very powerful tool. Also, um, there's a tool called Wrap Assembly. This is also going to result in a single solid body, and we call it rough exterior here. Imagine just wrapping your sub-assembly, your assembly, your part, whatever, with plastic wrap. And the shape that you're going to get from that is going to be the solid. Also, a little side note at the bottom, if you need to send your assembly to your customer that they want to use in a layout or a plant layout, and you don't want to send them all your intelligence, you can use this as a shrink wrap tool. You've probably heard shrink wrap in the industry. And you can send this file to them so that it holds the space that your machine or your product will will hold um, both out sending all the components, all the details, all the intelligence of your model. And the final tool for this first section is linked exterior. So this is also going to be an envelope. The word envelope um, is specific to tools like wrap assembly or here linked exterior. So to create an envelope around all these components to create this simplified representation. This is going to link the actual faces so we can be more accurate by copying these external faces rather than just generally wrapping them. So it depends what you want as a result. Instead of this resulting in a solid body like the simplify assembly and wrap assembly, this one's going to result in sheets, but like I said, it'll have that exact exterior. This works well on sub-assemblies that have complete shells. So for example, like an engine or a transmission, you know, I don't need all the internal workings of that. I want the outside shell, but I want it to be a very good representation of it from the outside. So in this screenshot in the upper left hand corner this is the design model of the transmission and over here on the right is actually the simplify version. You probably don't notice any difference. If I section that simplified version you'll see how it's shelled and basically it's sheet bodies and there are no components on the inside. It just copied those external faces. So we'll take a look at that. Let's go ahead and jump over here to NX and look at some of these tools. Here I have the plate that you saw on the slide. It's just I just modeled an NX from scratch, just a plate with two hole patterns. And maybe I want to have a simplified representation of just the outside um, hole pattern. So I'm going to come up here and create and extract a body at this particular time in my timestamp. And let me go ahead and hide the original body. So this is just a copy. And I'm going to use my synchronous tools, my delete face and specifically, you know, face and hole. And I'm going to come down here and just come and grab all these holes and delete them out. So my simplified representation would not have those. The example would be, you know, hey, I won't have this part. The detailed version has the inner hole pattern, 
but at my assembly level I just need those outside four mounting locations. Let me go ahead and display the original body and we want to put these on different reference sets. So right now my model reference sets have both solid bodies. So we're going to talk a little bit about standard practices and naming conventions later but this model reference set is automatically created so everything it adds. So I could create one called design, one create or create one called simplified as well. In this case I'm just going to use the model that it's already here and I'm going to come over here and deselect that extracted body and then I'm going to create a new reference set called simplified if I can type simplified and <clears throat> what we're going to do is grab that extracted body that way they're on different reference sets so then if I take this and throw it in a higher level assembly or assembly period I should say here I can come over here and replace the reference set between the model which would be my design my fully designed model in my reference set called simplified if I want to display the reference set or I'm sorry the simplified version so this is going to allow us to switch on and off what version of the component we want at that next higher level or in the assembly in general. I'm going to window back over here to the um, tractor and like I said this tractor is 3300 plus parts and like I said there's some that have multi bodies so it's even more components than that. I didn't take an exact count. Um, <clears throat> open this guy up and also I'm going to rotate this guy around the screen because of the web you may not be able to see it it might be a little choppy but this guy is rotating very well around the screen and we'll talk about later how to open that and how I'm getting these results um, for now let's talk about the simplification um, what I want to focus on is doing another part if I come in here to the rear end layer, uh, area and go to that particular subassembly <clears throat> I want to focus on this part on the back and let's just go into this part. It's a decent little complex part. And whether it's a native NX file or what you'll notice here is it's actually a body feature. It's imported. I could come around and use my synchronous tools. I, w I don't want to take away from that idea and delete holes and delete geometry off of that after I extract the body. One thing just to kind of think outside the box maybe is what if I just extruded the shape that I wanted to be my simplified representation. So I'm going to come up here and extrude around this bottom edge and use chain between so I can grab those faces quickly. And I'm just going to extrude down and snap to a particular point. Bring this up a little bit. Snap to that point. And maybe I want the height to snap somewhere there. I don't want to Boolean this. So that, then yellow is going to be my new solid. I'm going to come up here and extrude this cylinder down come up here maybe I'll snap back to that point and then the top come up here around that top um, ledge that center point so I've created two new solids let me hide the original body and maybe I want to unite those together <clears throat> okay so if I show the original I have the body feature which is the original solid and a representation that I want to be as simplified so once again I can change my reference set and I'm just going to deselect what my simplified is for model. Like I said, you want to check with naming conventions and how you're going to label these. Create a new one called simplified and grab my new extruded simplified body for that representation. So if I come back to my assembly, let's go to the subassembly level, I can come over here and replace the reference set <coughs> between simplified I'll let off that for a second you see the yellow and then back to my design model depending on what I want to display at that assembly level so let me go ahead and change that back to something else. so just to, just to give you another idea of how we can extrude to get the representation that we want <clears throat> so there we're focusing more on components now we want to focus more on sub-assemblies or you know doing a simplify assembly or a wrap assembly and the simplify assembly even though it could be a component you could also um, do multiple bodies or wrap assembly I could wrap a component or a body so keep that in mind even though I 
you know, I'm focusing on subassemblies here. Um, let's let's look at the tires, tires and wheel subassemblies. Let me come up here to this right front, and I'm just going to go into that particular subassembly. And we're going to use this. We're going to look at a tool called Simplify Assembly that we saw on the slide. So I mentioned that this is a wizard. So I'm going to come through here, and the first question is going to ask you, what are the bodies and you know that it needs linked to basically create this simplified representation? And what do you want to blank? What do you want to hide? Do you want to hide nothing? Do you want to hide the original data or all data? So if I hide original data, which I have selected, it's going to create a simplified representation and hide the original non-simplified bodies. If I say none, I would have both active in the file. The next thing it's going to do is process in those bodies, and it's going to look at how do you want to cover, how do you want to fill. Do you want to extrude? Well, I actually kind of extruded over that last example where I created my own extrudes you know, and put it on my own reference set, etc. I can plug circular holes. I can do a body from an outline. I can do a bounding sphere and do a body from a 3D profile. So I'm going to go ahead and plug circular holes and <clears throat> keep this default value, grab the bodies I potentially want to plug, and notice how it highlights the particular holes that it could plug with that particular size. If I increase this size, notice it come back and it says, well, I can plug that center cylinder as well. If I increase that size even more, notice it actually picks up the cylindrical faces of that wheel. So I'm going to say I want to go ahead and plug those, and it's going to create a cylinder in that shape, which later can be united with the rest of the, the um, solids. So actually, let's do that. Let's say unite all and put all those solid bodies as one. Now, I could do an extrude over top and get rid of the detail of the tread using the extrude command, which is kind of what we did in the other example just outside of simplified body. So it wants to know what an exterior face is. <clears throat> and as I said on the, on the uh, slide, I can do a leak check. I have this united as one solid. It's all solid information, so I'm going to go ahead and skip the leak check. But there it's going to create my simplified um, version. So if I come over here, you'll see that in your assembly, I'm sorry, in your assembly, your part navigator, you'd have the simplified feature, which you'd come back and edit anywhere in the wizard. I still have the component shown. I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to the top level assembly, and you'll see the simplified representation with the plugs, the holes missing, all that detail um, back at the top level assembly. Now, I mentioned there's three tools there's, that we're going to talk about today. There's the simplify assembly, the wrap assembly, and the um, <clears throat> link exterior faces. So here you see the first one, which was simplify assembly. You see, obviously, the simplified representation here. If I do a compare with wrap assembly, we'll come back here and pick on the right rear tire and wheel assembly. <clears throat> so let's go into this subassembly. Let me change the background so you can see a little better of the web. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do the wrap assembly, as I mentioned. So I'm going to window select these, and notice I'm not selecting anything. So here in the next section, we're going to talk about how we can show things exact versus lightweight. So if I have all these selected, you'll see show exact, show lightweight. So if I show exact, I'm going to load those bodies to memory, then I can select them. So that will come into play when we talk about these faceted representations um, here just in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap the assembly, <coughs> grab my parts, hit OK. It's going to process that, and like I said, just very quickly, it's going to come back and say, let me wrap the out outside faces, and this could be your simplified version. If I come back in there, I could add additional offset. Maybe I want to add 5 millimeters offset to that, that solid body and you know, give me a little bit more room around there if I'm trying to enclose it. So this is an assembly type feature that can be edited, as you just saw me do. Also, with the wrap assembly and the next tool, linked exterior faces, you'll see that it creates a simplified reference set automatically. And that's due to customer defaults. If I go to File, Utilities, Customer Defaults, and look at Assemblies and Site Standards, you'll see it creates a simplified reference set, and I called it simple. So it put the word simple in there. Then notice the keyword is an assembly envelope. So that's going to be for wrap assembly and the next tool, which is 
um, link exterior faces. <coughs> so when we get back to the top level assembly here, I can then swap between the design reference set and the simplified reference set because of you saw that option in customer defaults. Um, like I said, this is also going to be for the next tool as well. So there you see the simplified representation show up. Let me make the top level assembly the work part. And then I can come in here and replace that reference set with simple, which is what you see there. Or I could come in here and change it with model, which is the actual detailed tire. So I can swap those on and off. Let me go ahead and turn back on the um, simplified reference set. <clears throat> For the final example, let's come in here and look at the drivetrain and let's focus on this uh, transmission assembly. So with those last two tools, the simplify assembly and the wrap assembly, I just got the exterior faces, kind of the simplified representation. Um, especially with wrap assembly, you know, it really just looked like a cylinder or whatever shape. I can do a wrap assembly on this, and you'll notice that I'm going to get, um, you know, a wrap. Imagine it having linear wrap around here, but maybe I want more control. Maybe I want more control, meaning the faces are going to look more realistic. So I'm going to come in here <clears throat> and grab the linked exterior, and I'm going to say grab all the bodies. I'm also going to say grab all the faces on those bodies. Now I could come in here instead of saying select everything, because there are a lot of small faces, I could come in here and click and say, hey, I want to copy you know, this whole pattern, because that's what I need to reference. Or I'm going to copy this whole pattern on, you know, on the bell housing side, because that's what I need to reference. So I can actually come in here and pick specific faces rather than copying them all. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use a hidden line technique, which is going to determine where the hidden lines are from this assembly. So I'm just going to specify a vector and a point from that vector. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do, you see that I have the option to hide original. I left hide original off because then I would have the design that I could show on and off, meaning all the components. Or, and then to it, I would have this simplified representation. If I check hide original, it would hide all the components automatically. And here in a minute, you'll see that I'm going to manually hide them. So what it's doing right now is it's copying all those outside faces from all those bodies. And it's processing what's external. And it's going to create sheet bodies, surfaces, and remove the inner components. So I don't know about you, but... If I had to pick all those faces, that would uh, be a little bit time consuming. So I have my simplified representation. Let me come over here and hide all the original components. Like I said, I could have done if I said hide original. And here's the linked exterior body. Now right now it looks exactly the same. It has all the detail on the external faces. But if I come up here and um, do a section on that, dynamic section, you'll see that it is empty. It removed all the guts. So I didn't need all those gears, all that detail um, for those design bodies. Once again, that's going to create a simplified reference set as we saw before. And let's go ahead and um, go back to the top level assembly. So we want to look at those tools. Um, we looked at simplifying components, some manual techniques. We looked at wrap assembly, linking the exterior faces, and also simplified assembly. The next section we want to focus on is reducing the data loaded for components. Really what we're looking at is, you know, how lightweight can we make this assembly? And more specifically, how do we open this so it's lightweight? So we're going to look at faceted representations, reference set, which we've already focused a lot on so far, load options, which would include partial loading and lightweight loading. So these faceted representations, also known as lightweight representations as far as the options go, they shadow or mimic the real model and allow assemblies to display the mimic model or the sh shadow model rather than the full model. It's a tessellated faceted representation, kind of like JT, so it occupies less memory. It's lighter, it loads fast, it refreshes, updates fast. And starting with 7.5, these lightweight representations are automatically created, and that's where the show 
lightweight versus exact come in that you saw me have to do with the tran or I'm sorry the uh, tire. Um, there are other reference sets prior to 7.5, but it creates it as a reference set. The meaning, let me say that again. There's lightweight representations created before that, but it uses reference sets. Here, this is not a reference set. It just shows exact. It shows lightweight. There's a lot of operations or actions in NX that supports this lightweight representation. Things like view sections, interference checking, different measures, weight management, and even creating drawing views, which we'll take a quick look at the end. Like what happened to me, if you cannot select something due to it being lightweight, then right click on it, say make it, and show exact if it needs to be. So you can right click show exact, right click show lightweight to free up memory, and I'm going to show you the lightweight representations on file open here in a minute. So here's what I was talking about. If I need to right click and load something to memory so that I can select it, like I said, there's a lot of applications or operations that, that you don't need to load it exact, like interference checking is listed, but if I need to select it, I can right click and show exact. Also, you can turn on a column inside your assembly navigator called representation, and you'll see if it's loaded exact or lightweight. The feather's lightweight, the uh, filled in diamond shape is exact. There's customer defaults here that you can play around with. Back to the assembly site standards. Down here at the bottom it says load smart lightweight data. This option allows lightweight geometry to participate in many applications that originally only worked with solid bodies. It will do this by loading extra data from the component part that is being loaded lightweight. So what that's saying, there are certain applications if that's lightweight and it needs to load a more exact representation, it'll go ahead and do so. I'm not going to go over this slide. Um, what you can do is you can, when the replay's up, if you're very interested in this, you can come back and pause this slide and read it. But basically what I'm talking about here is how these lightweight representations, you know, versus 7.5 or 7.0 and newer, you know, what happened between NX5 and NX7 with lightweight representations, what about if they're last saved in NX4 or before NX4. Um, I actually pulled this straight from the help. I know this link doesn't help you a ton, but you could find it there. But there's um, a list of questions about lightweight representations or a frequently asked questions um, that you can use here. It's pretty seamless interaction of how it treats um, these lightweight representations even on older files. But there are a couple things that, you know, that to be aware of there. So we've started talking about reference sets by swapping out a simplify versus a design reference set. On the file open, you can control from a reference set what is loaded. So do I want the model reference set from each file to be loaded or what's my priority? And we'll look at that here in a second, but that's only if partial loading is on. And right now you haven't even seen what partial loading is, so we'll look at that in a minute. But so far, what you have noticed is I can create reference set, I can select what belongs to a re reference set, and as you see on the screenshot, I can replace a reference set um, as needed, and a reference set in general, or even um, you know the simplify versus design idea, where I've seen people use wireframe reference sets where they go in and they extract all the curves from the body, and then that could be a reference set that they show at the assembly level. Um, I talked about standards. With the new files, a model reference set, an entire part reference set, an empty reference set are system generated. You have certain standards for simplified geometry, like I said, that, that wrap, right, meaning the um, envelope, the assembly envelope, so doing a wrap assembly or the link exterior faces. So I can put in some um, standards here for what it's going to be called. So like, it's, like it says here, you can define some of these standards and customer defaults. The biggest thing is for everybody to be on the same page because if I want to pick a particular reference set to open, we want it to have the same name, right? It all says simplified or it all says simple or it all, everybody says this or that, right? Instead of one person calling it simple, one person calling it simplified. Okay, load options. Our goal is to open this large assembly as fast as we can so we can start working on the assembly and manipulating the assembly to get our job done. So it's very important to minimize that assembly loading time. We're going to control how much and in what format or form the component data is loaded. We're going to say which components are loaded. 
We're going to say how the components are loaded, whether it's partial loading, kind of display only, whether it's these lightweight representations, whether it's inner part data that we need to check on that, or even just the structure only. So here we're looking at the assembly load options. And I'm skipping over the top option, which is load. You're probably familiar with that, whether I'm going to find the part files for my assembly in the same folder, from folder, right, the same folder as the assembly, whether it's as saved or from search directories. What we're focusing here is more on the scope. So underneath scope, I can say, do I want to load all components, the structure only, how it was saved, or by groups? And we haven't talked about component groups yet. Um, by the way, it's 1 o'clock, and as I said, I'll run over. I probably got about 15 minutes left just to give everybody a, a heads up. Um, <clears throat> anyway, partial loading, we can toggle on for large assemblies. We want to toggle that on for large assemblies. It's going to speed up how fast it loads and how it manipulates, right? If it's not loaded to memory, it's going to reduce memory usage, which is going to make it go faster. Lightweight representations, which are those faceted representations we talked about a couple of slides ago, that's going to turn on the option that says use lightweight representations. And down at the bottom, you'll see load inner part data. So if I need to toggle that on so that I make sure that my wave linking, my inner part links, or my assembly constraints can update, I can turn that on, which is going to take up a little more resources. If I leave that unchecked, then it'll be a little lighter. Um, but then those will not update. So a little trade-off there. Um, let me hold off one second on this. I wanted to open this, show you what that structure only looks like, and show you the options for use partial and lightweight representation. So let me hold off just to put a couple other tools in front of you, and maybe we can combine a couple of these at one time. The next section is reducing the number of components loaded. So this would be once we have the assembly open, what do we show? What do we have loaded in memory? What do we not have loaded in memory? And certain tools that helps us navigate that. So you see product outline, component groups, bookmarks, open by proximity, find component, and update structure. So first of all, product outline. We're going to define a set of components or geometry, if your bodies, etc. And it's going to be a faceted representation that displays the overall size and shape of an assembly without having to load that geometry. So you see down at the bottom screen, it looks like everything underneath is just kind of this reference color. So that's called product outline. You, call, you go into a tool called define product outline. On the right is a screenshot for what that tool looks like. You grab the components. You can specify a color. You can turn up or down the translucency to how see-through it is. And what it's going to do is it's going to automatically set it up on a layer. You can change that layer in customer defaults out of the box. I believe it's layer 190. Um, and then you can toggle that product outline on and off you know, with the available layer settings. So the layer has, layer has to be shown to be able to um, toggle the product outline on and off. So I just want to make you aware of that tool. Component groups. I use component groups a lot. I think they're very handy. Um, this is just like it sounds, a component group, but it's used for loading and unloading. Loading parts to memory because I need to work on them, unloading parts from memory because I don't need to work on them anymore. They can be saved permanently or temporarily. What that means down here in the screenshot is I can have component groups in part, which means these component groups are permanently here in the assembly file. So every time somebody opens that up, they have these groups. Or you can have session component groups, which would mean it's only for that NX session. So someone who didn't even have um, right privileges to the top level assembly, they could create a, a session component group and be able to use that for their NX session. Okay, there's a tool called Bookmarks. Bookmarks is very handy. It records, communicates, and restores the context, meaning how we have parts shown, how we don't have parts shown, basically how they're loaded from session to session. It allows me to get back to a current, a current state, or basically allows you to duplicate a current state, your assembly state, and get back to that point very quickly. So what that means is maybe it's 10 to 5 and I'm getting ready to be done for the day, but I know in the morning I need to get back to exactly how I have those parts loaded or not loaded. So I can save off a bookmark, and what it's going to record 
or the options it's going to go with it is which component groups are applied, what are the active load options, and which components are loaded to memory. So that will allow me to open up that bookmark file in the morning and get right back to that state. It also would allow you to share the kind of the, the way that your assembly is loaded with other users by opening up this bookmark file. Some tools, right, when we start navigating these large assemblies, maybe graphically or even in the assembly navigator, sometimes we know we're going to be working on this certain sub-assembly or sub-component or even component, and we know that we need to reference components around there and load those to memory. So I can grab a specific component or a particular sub-assembly and say open by proximity, and you can create a bounding box by a certain range, and it will open everything in that bounding box um, to memory so then it can be referenced to do some top-down design, extrude from this part to this part, that sort of thing. Find component, it sounds like a simple idea, but when you get into large assemblies, looking at the entire list of the assembly navigator or all the small parts in my graphics screen, sometimes just using a find component can help me get to that particular point. So you can select components by name, by state, by attribute, from list, by size, and it is a cumulative selection. So if I pick something for each of those options, it's going to keep adding, adding that, that selection to it. So be aware of fine component. Update structure. Um, just want to make you aware of the tool. So because we're loading certain maybe sub-assemblies, um, unloaded, right, to keep them lightweight, we need to be able to update the structure so that we have the most up-to-date component groups find component criteria and open by proximity so that we can update it even though it may not be loaded to memory if that makes sense. So to get to this tool, the reason why I even put this slide on here is because it, it almost feels like it's a little hidden, meaning I right click on this column and this is where I turn on and off kind of categories or information inside of the assembly navigator, but you'll see update structure here. So then that's going to grab the update structure and grab a particular subcomponent, et cetera, and say update all levels within that. Okay, the next section is just a couple slides. Um, reduce the display of loaded components. We can filter components, and I just want to talk about the emphasize work part just for a second, just to make you aware of why it's doing it. So filter components actually kind of piggybacks on fine find components, and I don't mean they work necessarily together, but it's the same idea. So filter components, you see on the left, I have my unfiltered assembly navigator of this tractor, and all these sub components, and especially as I start expanding things, this list gets really long, right, and you're scrolling up and down, you're trying to find this, well, if you filter it, you can set up filters on certain requirements, and if you're going to be working on certain aspects of the assembly, the assembly, you can filter the assembly navigator, um, and you see these more will branch open to the full details, but you see how we have it filtered so that we can see the engine assembly, which is buried, I don't want to say buried, but here in a long list, and the transmission, which is here, and filters out all the other stuff that I, I may not need to see at this point in time. And the last thing here as far as um, the kind of the visual piece of this is you've probably seen this in action, but if you make a part, the work part, in the context of the assembly, it dims the background components. So here I've actually made this fender the work part, and notice how it's dimmed the background components. So over the last few versions, there's been different options. It's called emphasize, or if it's see-through, emphasize. In NX8, there was controls across the main toolbar across the top. Uh, the, is either the view or the utility toolbar. I can't remember at this point in time. Um, also underneath preferences visualization, there's some tools um, for how those options work. All right, so I wanted to show you the structure only. So I'm actually going to close this assembly all the way out and close this out. And I want to kind of kill two birds with one stone. I want to show you how structure only can help you, and then also using these component groups to be able to quickly load and unload components from your design. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go in the open. And 
if you're not familiar, if I go into open, you got my options to my assembly load options here, but you can also get to, if I cancel out of this, you can also get to your assembly load options here. So I'm going to go to open, and I want to open that top level tractor assembly back. And I have some shortcut options. I could actually just check load structure only here. But if I go into options, this is what we're talking about on the slides. Do I want to load all components? Do I want to load a structure only? Do I want to specify a, a particular component group and load there, which I could actually do in this case? I'm going to pick structure only because I've talked about that a little bit. Do I want to use partial loading? So if I'm not going to use lightweight representations, I can use partial loading, and I could set up what the order I wanted to look for reference sets to load into the assembly. I'm going to use lightweight representations, which will be those faceted bodies. Well, if you set this up and you open something over and over and you say, man, why do I have to keep changing these options in here? I want them to be default. You can save as default. So whenever I open up the assembly with load structure only, it instantly opens up. I mean, yeah, you're right. It's not loading, but I have the structure. So what this would allow me to do is come in and work on the subsystems or load the subsystems that I'm going to work on rather than anything. And up here you see we have some component groups specified. If you do not have component groups, these two headers up here, you need to right-click on the column and say show component groups because they're just turned off. Then you can add component groups to either the assembly, which will always go with the assembly, or for that particular NX session. If I come in here and say just load gearbox data, that's actually coming in here and loading that transmission that I had earlier. So you'll see that it actually has kind of a ghosted check mark because we're loading it here and you see it's that particular sub-assembly and files underneath it. If I was done with that, then I could unload it and go on to another component group. So I just wanted you to be aware, I know I'm running way over on time, just be aware of some of those tools. The last thing, I have a couple of screenshots on this. Like I said, I talked about this and introduced this and what's new with NX 8.5 Part 2 or Lunch Bite Then. So there's smart, lightweight views now. So we're taking that lightweight representation idea and being able to put it on the drawing view. So with smart, lightweight views, you can set the view resolution. You'll see that in the dialog here in a minute. It can be coarse, medium, or fine. If I turn it up to fine, Depending on how big the assembly is, well, it can be a little slower to create the view and a little slower to update the view. So I can figure out what my trade-off is and how detailed or fine I need that to be. Even though it's a smart, lightweight view, you can still dimension it without fully loading the reference geometry, meaning I don't have to load all this heavy assembly behind the drawing view. I can apply shading options, you know, whether it's colored, shaded with visible edges, etc. Do hidden line calculations and rendering, center line symbols. I can section it. I can apply view breaks to it. And there's a lot of stuff I can do even with this lightweight representation. If there's something that I can't do, well, I would just go ahead and load that to memory. So here's the options we're talking about. Like I said, these were new with 8.5. If you look underneath preferences and you go down to your uh, drafting, preferences drafting, or like it says drafting preferences, down at the very bottom you see for the view creation wizard there's a large assembly option. The default here is, I believe the default was, I don't think I've changed this, is 500 components. So what that's going to say, if you have an assembly that you're going to create a drawing of that has more than 500 components, it's going to add this tab in the view creation wizard. If it's less than that, then you won't have that tab. You know, obviously, you can tweak this to your company standard or what, what would be a large assembly to you to need this functionality. Inside the View Creation Wizard, once you're on the Large Assembly tab, this is where you can pick what kind of representation you want, whether it's lightweight and the resolution, which you'll see here. So do I want exact, smart lightweight, lightweight, or exact, which would be for pre-NX 8.5? Or do you want... or I should say once you've picked this, this in this case smart lightweight, you can say what kind of resolution there is, whether it's fine, medium, or coarse. So that's the option that we're looking at there. So I know I went way over on time. I just want to make you aware of a lot of these tools. And we started off at the front 
um, you know, some of the simplified tools and, and showed you those, both PowerPoint and, um, and some slides there. So, as always, our Ally PLM Lunch Bites replays is on our website. You can just go to allyplm.com. Um, down below here is a screenshot of our website. You can see what are upcoming um, topics, what are, uh, and also here are the replays. And then this is where you can suggest a topic or if you want to email me, that's fine. Thanks for your time. There's my contact information if you have any questions. Just just if you're interested, there's upcoming training offerings for Ally PLM at our office here. There's Essentials for Next Designers, which is a CAD class, um, five-day class for new users. You see the dates. Also have a CAM class, NX CAM Fundamentals, five-day class. You see the dates for this year. Um, all of our classes can be taught online, and you can go to our website for more information. So I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thanks for your attention this afternoon. Hope you found this session informative. Like I said, we went through a lot of different tools today, but I just really want to make you aware that those tools exist and generally how they work so that you can go out and explore um, those tools and, and see where they can help you with your large assembly performance. Um, if you have any suggestions for Lunch Bites, like I said, please let us know. Email them or request them on our website. If you have any questions, let me know. I appreciate your time and have a great afternoon.